Good morning. And welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is John Mayorana, and my fellow minister of the word is Kathy Shirey. On behalf of the Church of the Ascension, we welcome all our guests and visitors. We gather as a family to live out our mission, proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve the local community. Our vision is to be a thriving, spirit-filled faith community, transforming lives for Christ. Our role as missionary disciples is to share the love of Christ with whomever we meet. We are blessed to have you here with us today. Today's Mass is being streamed live. We are united today, both in person and with our online family. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Pasquale Kumanda of Cross Catholic Church and he is assisted by Deacon Gary. The Mass intention for this liturgy is for the deceased Richard Wicks. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones. There will be one collection today. And this weekend, we welcome Father Pascal Comanda from Cross Catholic Church to make an appeal for their international work for developing countries. This Catholic organization is endorsed by our diocese. Please use the envelopes provided if you choose to make a donation. Registration is open for our summer series and God did what? Each Wednesday evening for four weeks, starting July 10th at 6 p.m., we will gather for dinner, hear a story of God's power, have fellowship and age-appropriate activities. Attend one or all of the weeks as your schedule allows. This offering is for our entire parish family. See the bulletin, website, or the display in the commons to register. Registration deadline for the first session is this Monday, July 8th. Please rise now and greet those around you.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us humbly acknowledge our sins before the Lord, so that we can be prepared to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, become a word of sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns within the image of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, thus 
says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebel rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. enthroned in heaven as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, waiting for his mercy. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord our God, till he have pity on us. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for the power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has he been given? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary? and the brother of James and Josie and Judas and Simon, 
and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from carrying a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. As you heard in the beginning of the Mass, I'm Father Pascal Kumanda, a missionary of the Immaculate Heart of Mary Religious Order, and I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. In the beginning of the Mass, I was very impressed, but also edified by your mission statement here. It reads, we gather as a family to live out our mission which is to proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve our local community. It continues. Our vision is to be a thriving, spirit-filled faith community, transforming lives for Christ. Our role as missionary disciples is to share the love of Christ with whomever we meet. Such a powerful mission statement. That is exactly what Jesus was doing in the today's gospel. I was saying I'm very edified. But that, that tells me that, based on what we heard in the today's gospel, you, parishioners of, sin, uh, of the ascension of the Lord, you are the face of Jesus today. In other words, you are Jesus Christ today in your community and around the world. But I know when I say that you are Jesus today, some of you may be saying, Father, not me, because, you know, I am a sinner, I have my flaws. You may be wrong, uh, but also may be right. Uh, why? Because I remember one day here in the U.S., after Saturday Mass, I went to Safeway to do some shopping. As I was going around the store to check what I was about to buy, I saw a little girl from that family who just attended my Mass. They too were doing some shopping. So when that girl saw me, she didn't recognize me from the church, and she became very excited with a bright smile in her face, she started calling me very loud. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I could not believe my ears. Uh, so I turned around, I was like, maybe Jesus did appear here in the store and Jesus was nowhere to be found. And she kept calling me louder. So I told her, I said, my friend, I'm so sorry, I'm not Jesus but I do work for Jesus. And when she heard that, she goes like, don't lie to me. <laughs> and when she called me a liar, the mother was so embarrassed. She was like, Father, I'm so sorry, don't listen to her. She's just a little girl. I said, no, you don't have to be sorry because your girl just made my day forever. And as I was leaving the store that day, I kept smiling all day long about what happened. But at the same time, I was asking myself, why that little girl was calling me Jesus? Then I came to realize that, in fact, I was wrong to deny it. And she was right to insist that, yes, you are Jesus. That little girl was just reminding me about my true identity. I was Jesus back then, and I'm Jesus today. Not only me but all of us gathered here, we are Jesus. Let me explain. Jesus is the son of the living God as we know him. We too gathered here, we are children of our loving father in heaven. Before his birth, Jesus was being introduced by the prophets like the light 
that shine in the darkness of the world. And speaking to his disciples, and to them, to you, and to me, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, Jesus said, quote, You are the light of the world, and may your light shine before others, so that when they see the good that you do, they may give thanks to your Father in heaven. End of quote. Let us pause for a moment and think deeply about that. The one speaking is the Holy One, the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. And he is telling you and me that despite our flaws and our weaknesses, we too, we are the light. Meaning, we too, we are Jesus Christ today. Such a privilege, such an honor. But a privilege and honor that comes with some responsibilities. And that the responsibility consists of continuing Jesus' mission on earth today. What was his mission? As we heard in today's gospel, he was going around proclaiming the gospel and saving people's lives and souls. That means we too, as his disciples, we too, as Jesus Christ today, we have the same mission of proclaiming the gospel and saving people's lives and souls. By the way, when I was coming here uh, last, uh, yesterday, I heard a rumor. The rumor says that there are so many Catholic churches here in this city, but in terms of charity and outreach to the needy and the poor, you guys, you are the best. <laughs> so please keep it up, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for doing that, because by doing that, you are helping other people to see Jesus through you. You are helping them to see the love and the compassion and the hand of Jesus in their lives. But let us remember that uh, besides this community and this city, we also belong to the bigger family of the children of God. And we do have our sisters and brothers all over the world. So as a missionary going around the world serving our sisters and brothers, allow me to share my little experience with you so that you can see in which way you can expand your outreach, your compassion and generosity to also help them as well. The people that we are serving there, especially in Asia, Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean, many of them, if they have the opportunity of Sunday Mass, most of the time it is only once or twice a year, because many of them live in a war zone all the time. Other people, they live in a very remote area, difficult to access, because there is no road to get there, no car to bring you there, no electricity, nothing. So our job as a missionaries is to walk by feet every single weekend, finding our ways to get to where those people live or where they are fleeing so that we can gather them together and celebrate the Holy Eucharist. But that journey is very dangerous because as I'm speaking now, I'm very sad to inform you that not long ago, I lost one of my best friends. His name was Father Richard Massivi was working in the east of the Congo. On a weekend, he was going to those remote villages to celebrate with God's people. On his way, he was brutally attacked and killed by the rebels. His only crime is that he was a missionary and a Catholic priest who was going to proclaim the name of Jesus and to celebrate the Holy Mass. That is the context in which many of us are working. Another context is that when we go around, we come across many orphans who are living in the streets, small kids whose parents died from war, from illness, or natural disasters. Those kids are abandoned by themselves, and therefore they become the easy targets of human traffickers and terrorist organizations. We also come across poor mothers who have to work, to work more than five hours every single day to look for water in a bucket. Water that is not clean, but they have no choice. They just need that muddy water to bring it home, to drink, to cook food, and everything that we do with water every day. It was in that context that I was sent to minister in the west of Cameroon, which is a country in Africa. As I was moving from one village to another to celebrate with God's people, I came to know an amazing lady whose name was Anna. 
but she did not have kids. And every time she was asking me to say a prayer so that the Lord may do a miracle and give her a child. Our God is so amazing that a few years later he was able to listen to Anna's prayers and she became pregnant. But before giving birth, she was having complications. She could not go to the hospital, which was very far away from her village. There was no ambulance in the area. There was no cars like you have here. There was nothing. Complete poverty. So with a group of volunteers, we transported Anna on our shoulders to the hospital. And once we got there, thank God, everything went so well. Anna gave birth to her beautiful baby. She was so happy, the entire family, including myself, to see God's greatness in her life. But before bringing Anna and the baby home, she broke down in tears. And when we tried to find out why she was crying, she said, Father, I'm so grateful for the baby that God gave me, but I'm afraid to go home because I don't know what will happen to my baby. The reason is because Anna was so poor that she was living in a slum, a small house made of mud as wall and coconut leaves as roof. As you can imagine, very unsafe to live in those kind of houses, especially for a baby of a few days. Because when it's raining, for example, the rain will just pour inside, everything is wet, impossible to sleep. And when it is cold, it feels like you are sleeping outside. So she was very concerned about the safety of her baby. After a short prayer and a few words of consolation, we brought them home. But two days later, it started raining in the area with a very strong wind. And we were praying and thinking about Anna and the baby. The next morning, we went to see them. But once we got there, we noticed that the entire village, made of those small houses, the entire village was completely destroyed, including Anna's house. And we found our sister Anna standing there outside with the baby in her arms. She, her husband, and the entire family, and they were crying so loudly. And when they saw us coming, they kept crying even louder. I could hear Anna weeping in sadness and calling my name, saying, Father Pascal, please help me. Father Pascal, can you please save my baby? Anna and her family were crying because the baby just died. And that memory keeps haunting me until today. I cannot tell you how many nights I lose my sleep just thinking about that very tragic day when I still remember holding the lifeless body of Anna's baby in my arms and saying the prayer before the burial. Because the prayer was the only thing that I had to offer to the family in that very difficult moment. And guess what? I was unable to finish my prayer because me too, I was in tears, crying from sadness of knowing how far Anna came to become a mother and to have a baby. But I was crying also because as a missionary and as a priest to them, I was feeling powerless. I was feeling useless to the cry of Anna who was begging me, begging me to save her baby. My dear sisters and brothers, Anna and her baby's experience is just one among many of the heartbreaking situations that we face every single day in the mission. Unfortunately, those people do not have the means to come over here to share their stories. They do not have the media with them. Anna's baby who passed away does not have a voice today to explain to you the pain that her mother went through and continue to go through. I'm standing humbly before you this morning as their voice to ask for your prayers, your compassion, and your generosity. But I do that fully aware that times are very difficult here as well. That is why I pray that the Lord may continue to bless each one of you, your families and your jobs and your businesses to make them successful to help you move forward. But in this difficult time, we can also be inspired by Jesus himself. We remember that when he came to save us, it was very difficult for him. And yet, he made a decision 
to make a big sacrifice, the sacrifice of his own life. And he died on the cross as we can see here. Jesus died with humiliation like this, just out of love for you and for me. Because he wanted to save us, to save us from our sins, to give us life eternal, and to become our living bread and our living water. And today he's inviting us to do the same. But the good news is that Jesus is not asking us to die on the cross as he did for those people to have something. You know, a donation of $100 can be a sacrifice today. That sacrifice will help rescue one orphan from the street, from the hands of human traffickers and terrorist organizations. And therefore, you will be able to save the life of that orphan, the life of that kid, just like Jesus did save ours. He did it through his blood, but we can do it with money. With a donation of $500, that can be a sacrifice today. That sacrifice will help sponsor a water project or water well, to give water to an entire village for years to come and keep those poor mothers from working more than five hours every single day just to look for water to give to their kids to drink. As a family or as a business blessed by God, a donation of $2,500 or more for those who can can be a big sacrifice today. That big sacrifice will help build a house where babies like Anna's and those kids in the streets will have protection. And therefore, you will be able to save their lives just like Jesus did save ours. Again, he did it by his blood, but we can do it with the blessings that we receive from him. So despite those tears and sadness and challenges, Thanks God, there is still light and hope. That light and hope is made possible by an amazing organization, which is called Cross Catholic Outreach, that I'm here today to represent. I know that in the past, some of you were able to support this organization. I'd like to thank you so very much and to let you know that you have been our true living heroes. Because of your generosity, we are able to save many lives and many souls. And we are counting again on your help today so that together, we may continue Jesus' mission on earth of proclaiming the gospel and saving people's lives and souls. And if you pay attention on your seats, you will notice that there are some brochures of cross Catholic outreach. Can you please check around and take them out and open so that I can share something inside with you, please. And to our friends who are following me on, uh, online, uh, you can... Uh, check the comment, you will see the website when you can check it. Or you can stop by the office in the weekdays to pick one of those brochures uh, to see what I'm about to share with our friends here. Or you can text the word blessings to 47, 47, 47. So, when you open, you will notice that those are just a few faces of the people that this organization is helping around the world. They are members of the body of Christ just like you and me, meaning they are our sisters and brothers in Christ. There is a space here where you can write down your prayer intentions because we pray individually for the people who support this beautiful mission. On the page where it is written, we are a Catholic ministry. You will see there is a small brand new house. This may not be your dream home, but for people like Anna, her baby and those kids in the street, this little house is a blessing from heaven, coming from Jesus through the generosity of his disciples who are blessed in this part of the world. As you open further, you will notice that there's a small envelope here inside where you can feel free to unleash the power of Jesus Christ within you, the power to save a life, a soul, or a family. You can unleash that power either through a check made payable to cross Catholic outreach, or by calling the number here, or by writing down your debit or credit card information. And for those who want to remain anonymous with your donation, we do respect your privacy. Uh, you can feel free to give with cash donation that you can put here, or money order if you choose to do it from home. And if you choose to leave it blank here, to not write anything at all, that is fine. God knows that is coming from your heart, 
and we'll be very happy with your generosity. When you finish, please tear it off from here, from the middle, and you seal it very well. So just to clarify, as you heard in the announcement, there is only one collection today for the parish. There is no second collection for this organization. That means when you put your donation inside, seal it and keep it to yourself. Wait until the end of the Mass when you leave. I will be there in the back. You can feel free to give to me, to Dick and Gary, or to one of the ushers. Uh, in case you did not bring your wallet or checkbook, even if you have nothing to give today, please just take it home. The Lord will bless you so that you too can become a blessing to others. And from home, you can fill out very well and seal it, put in the mail, it will go straight in this processing address written here. If you know a friend, a relative, or a group that will be able to help, please take five or ten more brochures to share with them, so that together we may become the voices of the voiceless people who are suffering and are dying around the world. Because by helping them, we are actually helping the one who died on the cross for our sins. Jesus Christ is the one who has bestowed so many blessings upon us and our families. And Jesus is the one who said this. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do, to the least of my people that you do unto me. Those are the words of Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Please stand as we profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, God, the Father God, Almighty, God. maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and confidence, let us now offer our petitions to our loving Father. That the church not shy away from speaking God's word of mercy to the obstinate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations lead their people by raising up the weak and lowly and placing others before their own self-interests, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that this community give voice to the voiceless and be mindful to perform acts of kindness where there is indifference. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those who are sick know the healing power of Jesus, the Holy Comforter. For those names of the chronically ill listed in the bulletin, 
the names written in the Book of Prayer in the Commons, and for those names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have passed, that they be welcomed by God's mercy and compassion into the heavenly kingdom. For the names written in the Book of Prayer in the Commons, and for our deceased weekend mass intentions, Jim Lawfer, Richard Wicks, Orlando Malpaya, Joseph Kuto. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our founding fathers who fought so hard to give us freedom today, may the Lord receive them into his kingdom and inspire us to continue their fight. Let us pray to the Lord. Listen to the prayers of your people, O Lord, and give us what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the age of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and the yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and the glory of His name, for the May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord, your Son. 
Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <clears throat> indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, our Bishop Barry, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially your servant, Richard Wicks, for whom you offer this holy one mass. Welcome them and all who have died in your mercy into the light of your grace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from our evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, peace in our families, and in our nation. 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the faith of your people gathered here. And graciously grant us peace and the unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. an act of spiritual communion for those watching from home. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen.
At this time, I would like to invite forward anyone who's taking Eucharist to those who cannot be with us this day. The body of Christ. Lord Jesus, we ask that you go with this Eucharistic minister as he takes Eucharist to those to someone who cannot be with us this day, we ask that that person receiving you feel your loving presence in their life. We ask this in all things in your name, amen. amen. Go in peace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. See that for a moment. Uh, as a family often does, as they celebrate things. And so I ask if you have a birthday this month of July, please stand up so that we can congratulate you. <laughs> and I ask if there are any couples here who are celebrating their anniversaries in the month of July, if you would mind standing up so we can recognize you. Congratulations to you all. Uh, certainly we want to thank Father Pascal for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I ask if there are any other visitors with us today, would you mind standing up, letting us know who you are, and where you're visiting from, so we can welcome you? Any brave visitors out there? Yeah, I always tell people at this mass, I'd be going to the 1030 if I wasn't visiting. So <laughs> please stand for a closing blessing. Before the final blessing, just to thank you so very much for welcoming me in your community and also for attending this Holy Mass. Please keep our mission and our people in your prayers. So just a reminder that when you leave, please do not forget about your brochures. And for those who are ready for your donations, I will be there outside. You can give to me or to the ushers or to Deacon Gary. And remember that I heard the rumor, you are the best. So uh, please don't let me down. <laughs> Thank you so very much for your generosity. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless and protect you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.